Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So just because this is specifically dated for the 10th of December, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to resonate at that time. Yes, whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that is the message for you at that moment, okay? So um, let's get into the pre-shuffle energies and I'm going to, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you guys. I had to sit with this for a second and really think about whether or not this was a personal message, just a personal message for me, or if it was a message for the collective. And even as I'm saying that, Spirit is saying to me, yes, it was a personal message, Eric, but it was also it is also a message for the collective. So here we have Temperance with the Nine of Wands. Okay, um, please bear with me. I'm still learning how to use this this camera and this new system and all that. And I'm still trying to get the colors to my liking. Um, but anyway, you have temperance here with the nine of wands, and I really want this to focus better. Oh, there we go. See? Ta-da! Okay. <laughs> Bear with me. I'm, I'm really trying, you guys. All right. Um, temperance with the nine of wands. Now, this side of temperance is very... It, the, the, the strong message that comes through with this side of temperance is do not compromise what you have learned for the sake of others. It's as if there is a need or a desire or maybe even an inclination to, I guess, try and go back on maybe some things that you may have learned um, to maybe go a different approach that might be a little more acceptable for the people around you. Um, I feel like things, but, but see here with this nine of wands card and this card came out, I believe it came out yesterday. Can't quite remember, but I know it's come out within the last few days. Um, probably was yesterday, but with this night, with this side of the nine of wands here, you have an individual that's being, come on, focus. There we go. You have an individual that's kind of being like being coaxed into a cave, right? Um, it's for healing. It's for cocooning. That's what I keep hearing. And it, this, I've been referring to this side of the card as like a, a hyperbolic chamber type energy where you go in there to, um, you know, to heal. Um, I, and I heard you go in to trust your inner guidance and, and maybe even get acclimated with your inner guidance. So for those of us that are in this energy of basically cocooning, um, be really isolating, taking time to ourselves for healing and whatnot, it is also a time for you to really get deeper in touch with your intuition and to really start trusting yourself more in that way and, and whatnot, whatever. Okay. Now, your overall energy, however, is the Nine of Swords. And oh, come on, focus, 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 focus. Okay, well, I guess it doesn't want to focus. That's fine. That's fine. It doesn't matter. We have the Nine of Swords. And on the other side is the Four of Pentacles. And it's interesting because you have this Nine of Swords here. And it's like you're it, you're on the inside looking out. You're in this cocoon, okay? This hyperbolic chamber, if you want to call it that. And it's like you're looking at the outside and you're just, you've just got this anxiety, this fear, this uncertainty. Um, now with this Four so pent with this four of Pentacles on the other side, I, I really needed to stop and, and think about that for a second because, um, well, okay, because at first, you know, the Four of Pentacles isn't always the best energy. Um, it can be very miserly, a very hoarder-like energy. It could be that you're holding on to something that you need to release or you need to let go of, but that's not what I'm hearing. What I'm hearing is the foundation is being set, or in some cases, the foundation has been set, and you're sitting on a foundation right now, but it seems that maybe the foundation that you're sitting on is quite different to the other people around you. And so there's some sort of fear that you may not be acceptable by the people around you, that you may be too radical, you may be too different, this, that, the other. That's that's just what I'm picking up here. Use it, take it as it resonates for you, you know, fit it into your life as it resonates for you. But 
You need to keep this foundation, okay? Because beneath the Four of Pentacles, I believe, is the magician. Yes, it is. That's the magician right there, okay? And then, and then on the other side of the deck, underneath the Nine of Swords is the Seven of Wands, okay? So you need to stay grounded, is what I'm hearing. You also need to keep um, your boundaries, you know, stay true to yourself. I mean, this is this that's basically what this side of the temperance means, okay? You have the lion here, which is your which is pride, yes, okay, but it's also your sense of individual individuality, your sense of self, your sense of pride within yourself. You know what I mean? Pride and ego, sure, but this is this is this is I mean, everybody has it. You're never gonna escape it. You can never really completely kill it your ego it's really just a matter of balancing it right integrating your ego and not allowing it to like run the ship run the show yeah but also the bird there is representing the wisdom that you've gained and on the background you see you have the gallows here is which is what the hanged man hangs himself from this is not a time to hang yourself uh, for the sake of public opinion uh, there was something else i paused because there was something else that i was hearing underneath that but I, I it didn't quite come through but this is really this is not this is not the think about all the transformation that you've been doing think about all the the work that you've been doing on yourself to heal to grow to 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 manifest something better something different in your life now is not the time to compromise that just so that you can be agreeable with other people no it it it, it it, it's your life. I heard a number of things just now. It's your life. Live it how you choose to live it. And, and there was one other thing, um, but I lost it. But basically, that's it. It's your life. Choose you. You live it as you choose to. Now, also with this Nine of Swords here, this could be an energy of some of you looking out into the world and thinking, "Oh my God, I don't think I can ever go back out there," <laughs> which. I totally understand. I totally understand that. Um, especially if you've made some really strong changes, you've, you've really adjusted your way of life, your way of thinking, your way of being over these last few months to few years, it can be pretty daunting potentially going back out there in the world and and reintegrating with life right especially in this new form because again this is a different this is a different you this is a different foundation that you're under that you're that you're living on that you're coming from that you're approaching life from four of pentacles okay um and so that could be a topic of contention for a lot of people around you you know what I mean? All right. Okay, let's get into the rest of the message for today and see what else we have for the collective. One last shuffle. One more shuffle and then we'll... Okay. Oh, look. Well, there's the magician again on the other side. Ooh, it's the Ten of Wands. All right. Interesting. It's interesting because this Ten of Wands energy feels like the burdens th that you would need to carry, the, the necessary burdens um, that you need to carry in order to manifest your dreams, okay? Yeah, all right. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm going to give this three shuffles, and then we'll see what we've got for today, yeah? For the collective. For the collective. Tuesday. Ooh. December 10th, 2019. 
one last shuffle here. All right. All right, spirit, what's going on? What do, you, what, what do we need to talk about today? What are we discussing today? The color for the collective is still yellow. Action-oriented, willpower. Many of you may be in an energy of questioning what it is you want to do, who it is that you feel that you are, who it is that you know yourself to be, what it is you want to be doing in life. For some of you I'm picking up, there is apprehension here because, and even fear and anxiety, very much that Nine of Swords energy, because there are things, there are certain things that you actually want to do, but, you're, but you are not aware of whether people around you would be accepting of that. Um, ridicule is very prominent in this energy right now. Fear of ridicule, not wanting to be ridiculed anymore, not wanting to be ridiculed at all. Um, and it's it, it's it's what I what I want to say in response to that is the fact that you you may not necessarily want to come out of this shell or this cocoon that you're in. Don't worry, because it's really not time. It's really not time for you to be coming out of it yet. To be quite honest. For most, for the most of us, and to, and spirit, just, spirit was also just like you can stay in here as long as you feel you need to or want to, really. But at some point, there is going to be a moment where you're going to have to start making some moves. But I really feel like the, when the time is right, you'll be more willing and feel a little more ready. I mean, I'm not saying that all your fear and apprehension will be completely eradicated or gone. There may be a situation in which you just feel super confident and you're ready to go. But also, you may not. Um, but I do feel like you will know when it's ready, when it's time for you to start stepping out of the cocoon, yeah? One more shuffle. Let's see what else we can get, because I know there's a number of cards on the table already. Let's just see. And my eyes are closed, so I, I can't see what's on the table just yet. Um, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm purely channeling right now, just purely, ch purely channeling. So let's just see what else we can get for today's topic of discussion. Okay. Well, that was quite a bit, so we're going to stop there. Overall energy is, oh, look at that. There's that nine of swords again. On the other side, we, ooh, 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 okay. Well, we have the tower there. All right. Oh, wow, this is interesting. Look at all these court cards. So you have strength with the seven of swords. Oh, and page of cups. Okay, you have strength with the seven of swords and the seven of swords is reversed. That's good. You have the hermit, the king of cups, the King of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Swords, and the Page of Cups. Well, this is interesting. Ooh, please bear with me. Because I'm trying to figure out what these, what all these court cards mean. This is just, I feel like this is just you. This is just one person. I don't feel, because we have two depictions of masculine and feminine energy. And we have all four suits. Um, cups, pentacles, wands, and swords. And they're split between masculine and feminine energy. This is really cool. This is the very first time I have done a reading and the energies have come out like this. At least within the court cards. We have this is literally, this is literally a first for me as a reader, as a professional reader at this point. Um, but you have the King of Cups, the King of Pentacles, the Queen of Wands, and the Queen of Swords. And I really do feel like this is your energy. This is the balance between masculine and feminine within you. And you know what's really interesting about this is I really feel like the King of Cups and the Queen of Swords, with those two being the ones facing you or facing us, um, I feel like these are the ones that are leading the way. This is These are the faces that you would be showing here. King of Cups is emotional maturity, emotional stability. Um, I really, with, with this King of Cups energy, I really get the feeling that you are definitely wanting, striving to lead from the heart, um, do what it is that's right for you, 
um, find emotional fulfillment, pursue emotional fulfillment. There's an energy of not wanting to be afraid or feel bad about who you are or what it is you want out of life, what it is, the ideals that you hold within life, the way that you view others and the world around you. There's a desire to express that and to live that and to be honored for that, to be respected for that. That's what I'm getting with this King of Cups. The Queen of Swords is, is very much a defense mechanism. However, I do feel like, and it's funny because the Queen of Swords, as the way I'm holding it right now, the Queen of Swords is in front of all the th all three of them right so it's like she's the guard dog she's the one that's standing in the in the front making sure nobody gets in and nobody hurts you um however that queen of swords energy can be a little bit much it can be a little bit extreme um depending on how sensitive you are or depending on you know what the, spe the specific circumstances that you're dealing with that queen of swords can be pretty malicious can be pretty quick to cut, can be quite cutthroat. However, the King of Cups, I do feel like the King of Cups energy is tempering the Queen of Swords a little bit within you, okay? And then you have the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. The King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands, to me, is feeling like your internal reality, is feeling like your internal stability, your internal... Um, protector, the desire to be part of a family, to the, the, potentially, um, this is, these are what I'm getting, this is what I'm getting from the King of Pentacles. The King of Pentacles is representing that, that protector, I want to say father, husband type, but this is not gender specific, okay? This has nothing to do with gender, but, you know, the, the, the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles would represent the ultimate parents and the ultimate, like, uh, spouses, husband and wife, that rep, that situation. Um, financial stability, I'm getting a desire to, to, to provide, to protect, to, I keep hearing defend, okay, um, to be stable, to be grounded, also giving an energy of not necessarily needing to look within too much, um, I'm getting an energy of really knowing, being very, very well aware of who you are and what you stand for, or at least having a very strong idea of what it is that you want. Um, out of life. I'm getting a very strong sense, especially with this hermit card that's here, I'm getting a very strong sense of being very aware of yourself and who you are and what it is you want, what it is you stand for. And that was actually an energy that was coming through with temperance, okay? Because the temperance card was asking you not to compromise your morals or ideals or the person that you have grown to be up until this point just for the sake of others. And the king of pentacles is not an energy that's going to do something like that. Absolutely not. Like the king of pentacles is very solid in who he or she is and is not really willing to compromise for anybody. You know what I mean? Um... And then you have the Queen of Wands, which is the fire, which is the passion, the creativity, the confidence, um, the, the, the ability to attract, the law of attraction, the ability to draw what it is that you need towards you, whereas the King of Pentacles is the energy of um, uh, being able to physically do the work, okay? To take action, to create, to build. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely the balance, okay, the balance of masculine and feminine that you have within you. And then you have the hermit here, which again is giving me a feeling of like, you know very well who you are, what it is you stand for, and you are in an energy where you are now leading the way. You are leading the way for yourself and you're also leading the way for others. And it doesn't necessarily mean that others are going to completely follow in your footsteps. They're going to do exactly what it is that you do and live your life, but... You're also leading by example, or you're leading by the way, by, by leading by example, by, you know, doing what it is that you'd love to do and being yourself fully, truly, and authentically so uh, unapologetically. And that kind of helps to give others the influence or influence them to do the same, to follow you in your step, footsteps in that way and yet do it their way. Okay, but also what I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting very strongly reassurance with this hermit card that you know what it is that you want and you know who you are. 
you're very much in tune with yourself. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing else to learn about yourself. That doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't more to discover. There aren't more ways to grow. However, you have come to a point in your journey so far where you know yourself well enough to really be true to who you are. The, the, the problem, not the problem, but the challenge, I guess, this, the, the, the challenge right now is to, to do that to really allow yourself to be fully you, okay? You have strength with the seven of cups, I'm sorry, the seven of swords in reverse. I like the fact that the seven of swords is in reverse because what I'm hearing is in, in some cases, some of you are looking deception right in the face. There's also an energy of not being deceptive, having the strength to not be deceptive. I did forget to talk about this page of cups here, but um, it's all, it, I mean, it's all pretty much cre uh, related, but switching gears for just a second, going back to the hermit and the page of cups here, um, following your dreams. Yeah. There's a tortoise here. And it's making me think of the... the <laughs> It's making me think of the story of the tortoise and the ham and the hare. The tortoise and the ham. No, the tortoise and the hare. <laughs> Slow and steady wins the race. The tortoise is a very wise creature. Okay, it's also an animal that lives both on land. Well, lives in the ocean, but it can also be a land creature. Like they they lay their eggs on the land, on earth. They breathe oxygen from the air, not from water. Um. So there's definitely a balance between, you know, stability of the grounding of the earth and the motion and the emotion of water. But I'm I'm getting a very wise energy from this tortoise that's there, right? And it's getting me an energy of slow and steady wins the race. And what I'm feeling here is in terms of what it is you truly want, because the page of cups, yes, it can be a reconciliatory energy. Like it could be a situation in which someone wants to say that they're sorry or something like that. But it all, it's, it's also the dreamer the dreamer energy and it feels like here that you're standing in your own two feet on your own two feet solid in who you are and pursuing your dreams okay but a lot of it is still kind of in this very beginning phase slowly but surely you will get there but you need to remain authentic to yourself and that's what brings us to strength with the seven of swords in reverse because what i'm really feeling from the seven of swords in reverse here in in income in you know coupled with strength is the fact that you're having the strength to not be deceptive you're having the strength to or maybe now for the most part i feel like you are you are exhibiting this okay but this also could be your guidance here this could be something that's reminding you hey look don't put that mask back on don't allow your ego to 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 to, to convince you to be anything other than who you authentically are stand up for who you are stand strong in who you are do not falter okay that is Going at this point in the journey, that is absolutely going to be detrimental to you. It could even be devastating. It really could be devastating to the whole process. I mean, I'm, uh, sure, it could be devastating and it may set you back. It's ultimately, it's not going to keep you ever from getting what it is that you want. It's just going to prolong it, right? And you've come so far. You've done so much. I mean, look at this, you guys. You have done, I'm getting the chills just talking about this. You're get, you've come so far and done so much work to balance and integrate your masculine and feminine. Why on earth would you compromise now? Why? Look, I understand you still have this nine of swords energy here. Okay. But it's because the tower is falling. But you see, I don't see this as you. I see this as the people around you being, in essence, woken up, sh being shook. You do. I just noticed this dove here. Literally, I never saw this dove on this deck on this card before. This is grace, divine grace, in this dove. Peace also, but I'm I'm picking up divine grace here. The tyrants are being shaken out of their out of their nests, are being thrown from the nest. <laughs> and all you, 
all you can really do is sit back and watch it happen. Whoa, that is creepy. Okay. I also just noticed, <laughs> I also just noticed this figure standing here. Do you see that? Hold on. I'm trying to get this. Yeah. Do you see that? You see that figure standing there? That's fucking creepy, man. I don't know who that is. I just heard the masculine. The masculine is sitting there watching you, huh? All creepy stalker-like. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that could be your higher self. That could be angels, your spirit guides, whatnot, whatever. Um, okay, so the message there is that your guides are there trying to help you, trying to support you, trying to be there for you, but you might be so wrapped up in your fears. You might be so wrapped up in the anxiety, you know, the what ifs and all that, that you're missing what your guides might be wanting to tell you, how they may want to be helping you, whatnot, whatever. Okay. Um, let's get into some clarification and what i want to do is i want to start by i want to clarify this energy here king of cups king of pentacles queen of wands queen of swords i'm going to use the dreaming way tarot i want to get some clarification on this energy for you guys i'm hearing integrated parts it's as if it's as if very interesting. What I was going to say, it's as if the best elements of masculine and feminine are being represented by these four court cards here. However, the one thing I, I do notice, because you have the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands, that's kind of perfect. Because the King of Pentacles, masculine energy, is very much three-dimensionally oriented, very physically oriented, and that, that kind of thing. The feminine energy is very spiritually oriented, okay? And that's what wands represents. Pentacles represents the physical. But then when we get to the King of Cups and the Queen of Swords, it's like it's flipped. The King of Cups is the emotion. The Queen of Swords is the logic. And it's usually kind of like the other way around. The masculine is more the logical. The feminine is more the emotional. But I really like this because you have, you have this integration here with the King of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands. Those represent what like true masculine feminine energy, right? At its core, what it, what it stands for, I guess you could look at it. And then on the outside, you have the 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 mirror element i don't know i um, some of you might be understanding what i'm seeing it's not really all that important it's just it's just really interesting to me to see it um depicted in this way but the channeling that i'm getting from this is that this is like the ultimate balance within you of masculine and feminine energy and it really is like picking out the best parts of each individual piece and bringing them forward, okay? Very interesting. One last shuffle, and then I wanna get some greater clarity. I hope you guys understood where I was going with that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's just get some clarity. What is this? King of Cups, King of Pentacles, Queen of Wands, Queen of Swords. There's that Page of Cups again. Knight of Swords. Wow. Okay. We have the High Priestess. Oh, and the Empress. Mm. Overall energy. The Lovers. See? You see? There it is right there. The ultimate balance of masculine and feminine within you. The union, the integration of masculine and feminine within. Overall energy of the lovers. Now, I kind of, before I started shuffling this part, I kind of thought maybe with, I wonder if this is going to be uh, going to be confirmed, right? And I was thinking maybe it would come out as the two of cups. Spirit did one better. We've got the lovers. And that's, that's really the it, the ultimate balance of masculine and feminine here. Okay, so from that place, you have, from this place of ultimate balance, you have the Page of Cups with the Knight of Swords, 
the High Priestess and the Empress. So the Page of Cups and the Knight of Swords is an energy of being 100% willing and able to defend yourself, defend your desires, defend your dreams, your goals with the utmost force and fierceness. Queen of Swords as well, okay? The Queen of Swords is the energy that makes the decision, that calls the shots. The Knight of Swords is the energy that follows through, that takes action. So if the Queen of Swords says, good knight, go take out so-and-so, the knight says, she, you got it, my queen, right? But the Knight of Swords is very much a defensive energy for you. It can be offensive at some times, but it's mostly defensive because with this Page of Cups here, you have some dreams, you have some goals, you have desires that you really want to pursue. And I'm really getting a very much a very very much an inner child energy from this Page of Cups as well. And we were talking about that yesterday. And this Knight of Swords is definitely definitely like that big brother or maybe even big sister, however you want to look at it, that is willing to defend their younger sibling. So here, this is you being willing to defend your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, but also being willing to defend your inner child and what your inner child desires, what your inner child stands for, all that stuff. Especially since we've been in this energy of working with and integrating our inner child and healing our inner child, that's definitely a positive energy. With that, you have the High Priestess and the Empress, okay? So the High Priestess and the Empress, first of all, there's two feminine energies, which is beautiful, but the High Priestess is talking about secrets, um, and what I'm getting specifically is that there are things, especially coupled with the Empress here, there are things manifesting in the background and you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. Look, I know we've been taught, we say that, we, we, we say that all the time and I'm even getting tired of, of, <laughs> of saying that and channeling that. Cause it's like, all right, really? Like, when is this going to happen? You know what I mean? My ego starts to flare up, but when you're ready, it's going to happen. It, it's going to happen. Okay, I do feel like there are absolutely things manifesting in the background. That Empress energy is very abundant, very nurturing, very caring, very loving. I feel like what the Empress also, what the Empress is really talking about is nurturing and loving yourself in this time, in this process. Okay. That is quite a beautiful energy. All right. So... With that said, then, let's clarify this. Let's go into this one here. The Hermit with the Page of Cups, Strength, and the Seven of Swords. The Seven of Swords being in reverse. Okay. We'll use the same deck. Should, yes, use the same deck. Okay. Let's get a little clarity on this one. What is this for you? This is this energy of not compromising, of being 100% who you are, even to a certain extent, unapologetically who you are. You know what I mean? Like not putting on the mask of ego. Two of wands in reverse. Seven of cups. Okay. Yeah, I get it. So you overall energy, you do have the seven of cups here. So there's a good amount of confusion. And I kind of get the feeling that this confusion has a little bit of the devil, the devil's energy behind it. Because I get this feeling that it's like something is trying to throw you off your path. Something is trying to make you choose differently. Something is trying to make you reconsider even. Two of wands in reverse. There's no reason to rethink this. That's what I'm getting. There's no reason to rethink the choice you've already made, the path you've already been following. There's no reason to do so. From this, use a different one. Okay, I want to get a little bit more on that. Um, and I'm actually going to go to the, the uh, Wild Unknown Tarot for this. I do, I want to define this a little bit more here for you guys. Yeah, there's no reason to choose differently. There's no reason to change your mind. I understand you might be a little confused right now. The biggest part of this confusion with the Seven of Cups is not knowing how things are going to turn out. And that's what you have here with the High Priestess and the Empress, though. I mean, yes, you don't know how it's going to turn out, but the universe is 
is on it, is working on it. You don't have to worry. There's abundance here. Please focus. Please, please, please focus. There's a, whatever. There's an abundance of energy here for you. There's an abundance of resources. This is going to work out. Time will tell, okay? But I want to get, I'm going to clarify this. Uh, one more shuffle. It may even be a sense of stagnation or maybe a sense that things aren't working. You don't see anything happening on the surface that could be what's confusing you here. You don't need to reconsider. You don't need to change your mind. You don't need to change direction. Let's just get a little bit more here, please, Spirit. A little more of a definition of this for us. Two of Wands, Seven of Cups. Just a little. Oh, see, look at that. Overall energy is the four of wands. See? Yes. Your foundation is set. You're on the right path. You're doing the right thing. You have the fool with the nine of pentacles, the nine of cups, and the magician. I mean, come on, guys. What more, <laughs> what more do you need? The fool, the nine of pentacles, the nine of cups, and the magician with the four of wands at the bottom of the deck. There is absolutely no reason for you to reconsider. Because you have taken a leap of faith from a place of trust in the universe, from a place of autonomy, from a place of individuality, from a place of independence, from a place of sovereignty. Wishes will be fulfilled. Nine of Cups. You are manifesting this. The magician. You are. You have taken this into your own hands. You're doing this right. You're doing this the right way. You're doing this correctly. You know what, Spirit? I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you guys in on something because, uh, you know, you guys know that there a lot of times where I'll resonate a, very, really quite well with what's coming through here, and this is definitely resonating with me right now. And Spirit literally just said to me, "Listen to what your own intuition is telling you," i.e., this message. So I'm in the same boat with you guys, <laughs> okay? You're going in your own direction, and that is a good thing. Maintain that. Maintain your stride. Do not change your stride for anyone else unless you desire to make that change. Unless that change is something that you really want or is something that's really going to help you lead, uh, on your path. Unless you come to the decision that actually, you know what, I do want to make this change or I do want to make this adjustment for no other reason than my own rationale, you'll say. Not necessarily because someone else is saying, you know what, you really should do it this way, actually. No. No, we don't, we don't kowtow like that here any longer, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I want to get a closing message from Spirit now. And then we're going to get our Oracle Guidance, and our Oracle Guidance today is going to come from the Crystal Mandala. Okay. Closing message from Spirit. Some encouragement, reassurance, maybe. One last shuffle. And then, all right, we'll see you here. Closing message from Spirit. I feel like the sun has come out. Has the sun come out? No. Ooh, death. Oh, okay. Overall energy is the Ace of Cups. And honestly, you guys, I'm, and you guys know how I feel about love. I love, I, I am no stranger to love. I love love, but I don't do love readings specifically, okay? Mainly because there are just so many other people out there that do it, and they do it really well. And I wanted to make this a channel where we could come together and talk about how to heal ourselves so that we're ready for love, right? Well, Ace of Cups is here, and I'm going to be 100% completely honest with you guys. This does mean that a relationship is coming. If you're really desiring a relationship, it's coming. It is on its way, okay? 
You are doing the work right now to prepare yourself for it, going through the transformation to prepare yourself for the love that you desire, that you need, that you require, all right? Also, this Ace of Cups is love from the universe, unconditional love from the universe, okay? You have death with, oh, the moon, interesting. Oh, shoot, the sun, the sun did come out, you guys, with the page of, cu um, page of wands. But you know what this is? I mean, we're talking ultimate union balance of masculine and feminine energy right here. Okay, this this to me, when it represent when we're talking about the balance between masculine and feminine energy, this has no real characteristics other than pure energetic state. Because okay, so hear me out. This is what I'm because this is how I'm seeing it. There are many depictions of the balance between masculine and feminine energies within the tarot. Okay, there is the king and queen of wands, pentacles, swords, and cups, right? Okay. Then you have the emperor and the empress. Okay. And then you also have the high, the hierophant and the high priestess. Okay. And then you have the sun and the moon. Okay. But everything other than the sun and the moon has certain characteristics that they stand for. The high priestess and the hierophant represents spiritual teaching, higher learning, wisdom, whatnot, whatever. Cups represents emotions. Swords represents thoughts. Pentacles represents the physical world. Wands represents spirit and inspiration and creativity. Yeah. The emperor and the empress are the masters of their own domains. The emperor is the king of all kings. The empress is the queen of all queens. Right? <clears throat> okay. But then when you get into the sun and the moon here, this to me is just pure energy. Pure source energy. Um, the all-encompassing energies of of what masculine represents what masculinity represents and what femininity represents okay this is the whole and to me this is the whole and complete version or representation of masculine energy in the sun rather than just like what the king of swords would represent or what the emperor would represent or what the hierophant represents the same with the moon with the full representation of feminine energy rather than with what the queen of cups or the the empress or the the high priestess would represent uh, respectively right so here you have that balance here you have the sun and the moon integrating together re creating a transformation or, or facilitating a transfer a transformation which then facilitates a greater understanding or greater awareness of the self in the physical realm to me, the Page of Wands is a minor arcana version of, hold on, wait for it, wait for it, the Hermit. Okay. But see, the thing is here, the Hermit would represent, uh, please focus, please, 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 there we go. The Hermit would represent that journey that you would take that internal journey that you would embark on to learn about yourself. The, the, the hermit is that energy or that journey that you would take, at least in terms of this situation, that would help you discover the masculine and feminine within yourself, which would then lead you to the integration. The integration would could then be represented by this exact pull right here, sun and the moon, death and also the page of wands because that page of wands would represent you integrating and you integrating and um and embodying that balance in the physical realm and then that leading you i'm sorry guys i'm really trying to <laughs> i'm really trying here um that 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 balance would then get integrated in the physical, you get to explore yourself in the physical, and then you get to express that because I am feeling like this is leading towards some sort of creative expression in some way, some inspired movement somehow, okay? Oh, that is a really beautiful closing message, Spirit. Definitely the encouragement that we needed. I'm very happy about that. All right, let's close the reading by getting our oracle guidance from the crystal mandala here. Okay. Closing message, please. Spirit, oracle guidance for us for this. Woo! Oh, I'm gonna try that again. Oh, geez. Oh, geez, I'm happy. 
I'm having trouble here, guys. Okay. Closing message for the spirit. Oracle guidance for today's reading, for today's message. Last message shuffling. Okay. Here we go, kids. Closing message. Oracle guidance. There it is right there. Card number 44. Goddess Bastet and Cat's Eye. Sacred pleasure. Mmm. Mmm. Ain't that just beautiful? Look at that. Okay. Let's see what this has to say. Now, that is a master number, four and four, or 44. Um, that's a number of the archangels. Angels are here with you. It boils down to an eight. Eight is abundance, yes? All right. Sacred pleasure. Are you gonna, are you gonna focus? Can you focus a little bit more? Can you, can you? All right, that's good enough. We bring you the empowerment of sacred pleasure. It is said that the spirit had to be enticed into the body to give up its complete freedom and willingly take on an experience of limitation that could lead to divine growth. It needed, to deal, it needed the deal to be sweetened. So music was created, music that could only be felt and expressed through the body. Spirit jumped in like a flash and life was created. There is, more to, there is more life that can be created in you and your world. Although there are undoubtedly struggles as a natural part of opening up to more life, there is divine sweetness too. That is the gift of sacred pleasure. This is the pleasure that gives you joy in your aliveness. It is innocent, sensual, and life-affirming. It is time for you to receive more of this. This oracle says it's time to put a little sugar in your bowl. Enjoy yourself. Revel in your ingenuity. Revel in who you are. Okay, I want to read this last paragraph. This oracle comes to you with healing guidance. The Universal Mother knows you have suffered and wants to sweeten your deal. If you allow her, she will assist you in purging the self-loathing that has placed you in a painful bind of fear-based control. She will help you love uh, yourself so you can experience the sacred pleasure your life is meant to bring to you. If you have already done this work on yourself and find that bringing sacred pleasure to others through your loving consciousness is part of your life's mission and sole purpose, the Oracle brings you confirmation of this. There is value in teaching strength, and there is value in providing a safe way for others to experience the sacredness of pleasure as an act of loving life. Beautiful message. All right, guys. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do want to say, hang in there, okay? Everything is going to be okay. Everything is working out for its highest good. I promise you. And I know how difficult it is to hear that in times like this, because that was... That was something spirit said to me while I was doing my morning yoga meditation and just like stretchy, whatnot, whatever. Um, I got to a point where it was like spirit said to me, Eric, don't worry. Everything is exactly how it's meant to be. But as soon as I heard that, as soon as they said that, I just, I just started crying because <laughs> I don't know how to take that at this point. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, that is, they just, they just said it. That is this high priestess energy. I don't know how to take this. I don't know how to take that at this point and spirit, but you know what? I'm just going to trust you. The high priestess with the empress. Okay. There are a lot of hidden elements. There are a lot of unknown things, a lot of things that are not consciously known to you right now, but the empress brings you abundance and the high priestess brings you assurance that everything is always working out for the highest good of all involved and that absolutely includes yourself no you have not been left out of the equation <laughs> okay all right i love you guys i hope you have a fantastic day and i look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning yeah take care Mwah. bye